Hallelujah. Can somebody shout Jesus? Can somebody say praise the Lord? Together once again, palapakan po natin ang Panginoon. Praise the Lord. The first five, or what we study and do in our church, is a curriculum or set of lessons we want everyone throughout our church family worldwide to be taught. Ito po ay isang curriculum, ito po ay sets of lessons that we believe can serve and will serve as the foundational teachings of our church. Every leader, every volunteer, every member, and every attendee of our church must be taught this, and later we pray will be trained to teach it as well. Through this curriculum, through this set of lessons, we believe our church will not only have foundational teachings, but more importantly, will have a simple but meaningful spiritual direction that can help an individual believer, a Bible study group, a congregation grow in faith even more. If you want to know more about the first five, you can watch on our FB page, Yung Rise Up Church, or through our YouTube channel, Yung RU Church, uh, the message that we delivered before or earlier, which serves as the overview of this curriculum. Ang title po ng message na yun, na pwede nyo hanapin sa Rise Up Church FB page o di kaya sa RU Church YouTube channel. Ang title po ay The First Five, What We Study and Do in Our Church. You can review that in another time for your personal benefit. But for today, as we continue with our series of messages related to the first five, our message for today will serve as a supplement to this uh, series as we discuss specifically for this message, which is part one of a three-part message series, what we desire to become as a church, and for part one, what we are praying for as we study and do the first five. Part one, what we are praying for as we study and do the first five. Minsa pa nga po tayo muko, pumikit, manalangin sa Panginoon. Let us commit to the Lord the study of His Word. Aming Diyos at aming Ama, nagpapasalamat po kami sa araw na ito. Na minsan pa, binigyan niyo po kami ng pagkakataon upang sa inyo ay sumamba. Kasama at kapiling ng mga kapatiran po natin, Kapatiran po namin dito sa Mansura at maging sa iba't ibang panig ng mundo. Thank you, Lord, that not only can we gather together to worship, but you're giving us a chance to listen to your word once again. At tulungan niyo po ako bilang inyong speaker na lahat ng lalabas sa aking labi will be words of encouragement, comfort, guidance, and blessing for your people. At ayaan mo rin, Panginoon, na sa pangangaral ng iyong salita, ito mang part 1, all the way to part 2 and part 3, may they widen our understanding of what the first five is, may they uh, have an impact in our personal life, na way matulungan kami, Panginoon, that through our individual personal spiritual growth, as we discuss these messages, e eh, maging aming simbahan, e eh, ganun din ay lumago. Panginoon, rinirebuk namin lahat ng pwedeng maging hindrance in Jesus' name. Lahat ng mga pwedeng maging adlang upang kami ay makapakinig ng maayos. Lahat ng pwedeng maging adlang para kami makapag-focus kay Jesus. Lahat ng pwedeng maging, mga, maging adlang sa pagkilos ng Ibal na Espiritu. We reject and rebuke that in Jesus' name. And we just truly welcome the power, the presence of the Holy Spirit of God in our midst. That everyone who will be listening to this word, everyone who is even present right now in our center, they will experience spiritual restoration, revival, marirecharge sila, at maging Panginoon yung hindi pa nakakakilala sa inyo. Alam po namin, nothing is impossible with God. Pati sila, Panginoon, can experience the born again experience in their lives. Help us, Lord, to listen to your word. We surrender all. We surrender all of our burdens, our problems, our trials and testings. Lahat ng bumabagabag sa aming puso't isipan. Lahat ng yan, Lord, we lay at your feet. We rest in your presence, Lord. Embrace us, O God. We give you glory, we give you thanks as we pray all of this. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' mighty name, this is our prayer. All God's people say, Amen. Para po sa ngayon, part 1, at dahil po ito'y part 1, eh simulan po muna natin by having a very quick review kung ano nga ba yung first five. Kasi ang focus ng message natin today is what we are praying for as we study and do this first five. Ano nga ba ulit siyang first five na yan? The first five, what we study and do in our church. I'd like to read 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9 to 15 first before I make that quick review. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9 to 15 says, For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, God's building. 
According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation, and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds upon it, for no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Pag iniisip po natin ang isang simbahan, pag iniisip po natin ang Church ni Jesus Christ here on this earth, eh pwede po natin isipin na ito ay tulad ng pagtatayo ng isang building. But we are not necessarily referring to a physical building, but we're referring to something spiritual. That as God calls people to be saved, as God calls people to be born again, as God calls people to repent and believe in His gospel, yung mga tinatawag niya pang nagkakasama, yun yung binibuild ni Lord to become this is spiritual house. At ginagamit niya ang kanya mga tinawag, ginagamit niya ang mga human vessels nun paman, katulad nito, si Paul, as he is writing in 1 Corinthians, at maging sa kasalukuyan, mga katulad ko, ng mga pastor, dito and in every other part of the world, he's using people like us to build that spiritual house. At tulad din naman ng physical building, napakalaga na pag itinatayo, kamusta yung kanyang foundation, nang matiyak na pag itinayo, eh ito eh magiging matibay, at maa-accomplish niya kung ano yung rason kung bakit ibinild yung foundation na yun. And the same thing with the spiritual house, the same thing with the church, importante yung foundation. And that is why, pag sinasabi natin yung the first five or what we study and do in our church, we're talking about building the right foundation for our faith, building the right foundation for our church. At ang quick review po natin just sa first five na yan would be this. Number one, repent and believe in the gospel. Ang number two dun sa first five, worship together as a church family. Number three sa first five, grow through discipleship training. Number four sa first five, give to glorify God. And number five sa first five, fulfill God's mission. Na dahil sinasabi natin at pinaniniwalaan natin na importante yung pundasyon ng pananampalataya, so ibig sabihin importante yung nauunang itinuturo. Marami namang dapat ituro, napakarami naman dapat pag-aralan, napakarami naman dapat gawin ng isang mana ng palataya, pero ano ba dapat yung nauuna? Na dahil inuna mo yon yun yung naglalagay ng foundation at nagpapatibay ng foundation na yon so that it will accomplish what God wants to accomplish for that spiritual house, for that believer, for that church. At yung limang lessons na yan, ang pinag natin na yan ang mga kasali doon sa tinatawag na the first five what we study and do in our church. Now next, of course, to be discussed is, paano ba natin na-determine yung limang lessons na yan? How did we determine kung ano yung magiging kasali dun sa ating foundational teachings, dun sa curriculum na yan, dun sa sets of lessons na yan? How did we determine the first five? How did we determine the first five? And again, I would like to look back first to Scripture. Psalm 143 verse 10 says, Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on level ground. Psalm 143 verse 10 says again, Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on level ground. So kung may magtatanong sa akin bilang spiritual leader of this church, bilang pastor ng church na ito, Pastor, paano ba natin na come up yung first five na yan? Ang isasagot ko sa kanila, unang-una yung Psalm 143 verse 10. Yung Psalm 143 verse 10. Dahil itong nakasulat dyan has always been my prayer mula no ako'y batang-bata pa na tinawag ng Panginoon and fast forward hanggang sa kasalukuyan mula nung nasimula ng church natin five years ago at the time of this preaching. At mag pagpasok ng bagong taon na to, itong 2018, and as we uh, have prayed for this, itong the first five, patuli pa rin yan ang aking prayer. Lord, teach me to do your will, for you are my God, and let your good spirit lead me on level ground. At nawa, yan din ang maging prayer natin sa kanya-kanya natin mga mahalagang desisyon sa ating buhay. Teach me to do your will, you are my God, Holy Spirit, lead me. And having said that, e eh nakita po natin sa mga 
pagtakbo ng ating uh, pananampalataya, pagtakbo ng ating simbahan na nakakatulong sa atin sa pagdetermine ng kahit anong bagay ang mga sumusunod. Number one, as a result of our reading of the Bible. As a result of our reading of the Bible. Whether kung paano natin nabuo yung curriculum na yan, yung sets of lessons na yan, paano natin na-determine yung mga kasali sa first five, or kung ito may kinalaman sa ating mga personal na decision sa buhay, decision para sa ating pamilya, decision para sa trabaho, para sa finances, para sa ministry, lagi ang mananampalataya bumabalik sa salita ng Diyos. It should always be as a result of our reading of the Bible. Number two, na-determine natin yung first five at kung ano yung laman yan as a result of our study of the history of the Christian church. And we're not just talking about this church, we're not just talking about the contemporary church or the modern church, but we're talking about the collective history of the entire Christian church mula sa New Testament at pagkatapos nabuo yung Biblia, ay yung tinatawag na early church, and as the church progressed, all the way to what is called the Protestant Reformation. At mula ng Protestant Reformation, pagkakaroon ng maraming mga iba't ibang denominations leading to this present time na sa ating pag-aaral ng kasaysayan ng buong simbahan ni Yesu Cristo which we would like to call the Body of Christ. E nakikita natin at yung contents nitong the first five, yung mga lessons na gusto natin i-discuss, e nun pa man, e yun na ang mga nakikita sa mga mananampalataya sa New Testament, nung nabuo yung Bible, the early church, then moving on all the way to the Protestant Reformation, kung bakit nabuo ang iba't ibang mga denominations, leading to this present time. And how else? Number three, as a result of our study of growing churches. Dahil sa panahon na ito, o tinatawag nating modern or contemporary time, eh, meron tayo mga nakikilala na mga mahuhusay, uh, malalaki, magaganda ang patutuon ng mga churches. We call them growing churches. Minsan, katulad natin sila sa uh, lahat ng gusto nating mangyari. Minsan, meron tayong konting pinagkaiba sa kanila. At baka minsan pa talagang magkakaiba sa maraming bagay. Pero makikita mo, meron mga nag-unify dun sa mga growing churches na yon. And perhaps, eh, maaaring yung mga nag-unify na mga teachings Doon sa mga growing churches na yon ang rason kung bakit din sila patuloy na nag-grow. And we must learn from them. We can learn from them. At sa pag-aaral nito mga growing churches na ito, eh nakita ng inyong lingkod na yung contents nung the first five, yung lessons na pinag natin na kasali dyan, eh ganun din eh nakikita rin dyan sa mga sinasabing growing churches of the modern era. And number four, as a result of our unique experience as a local church. As a result of our unique experience as a local church. Kung meron tinatawag na the greater body of Christ, kung meron mga growing churches in the contemporary modern era, eh meron din tinatawag na local church at yung church natin ay isang example ng local church. This is our local church here in Mansura. We have other local churches in other parts of the Middle East, in the Philippines, in Hong Kong, we're trying to start one in Edmonton, Canada, and we're praying to start one in many other parts of the world as the Lord leads us. Pero yun yung tinatawag nating local church. And specifically, we call ourselves, as we believe that name must come from the Lord, Rise Up Church. And even as this message is being preached, this message is being preached in a conference being held here in Mansura, our church is five years going on its sixth year. At mula siya nang nagsimula noong 2012 hanggang sa kasalukuyan, eh binigyan tayo ng Panginoon ng ating sariling experience bilang isang simbahan. Paano tayo nagsimula? Very unique to us. Yung mga circumstances, paano tayo nagsimula? Yung mga challenges, kung paano tayo nagsimula? Pag kinumpare mo yun sa ibang mga simbahan, kung paano sila nagsimula, eh baka iba yung experience sila sa experience natin. Ganun din, meron tayong mga naging karanasan as we went through the years as we went through the tough times, maaring merong pagkakatulad sa ibang mga churches, maaring meron ding unique lang sa atin dahil sa gustong iparanas at ituro sa atin ng Diyos. But putting them all together, as we reflect, as we review, and as we evaluate our unique experience as a local church, eh, nakikita natin yung mga ginawa nating tama, nakikita rin natin yung mga ginawa nating mali, nakikita rin natin yung maaring kulang sa atin, 
Nakikita rin natin yung mga bagay na dapat mas lalo pa natin maklarify. Mayroong mga bagay niya na dapat natin ulit-ulitin ituro, ulit-ulitin gawin. Kaya minsan pag may nagsasabi sa isang simbahan na parang inuulit yung naturo nung nakalipas sa taon. Asahan nyo na yan kahit sa anumang simbahan, lalo na pag ito'y tumatakbo ng ilan ng mga taon na meron talagang mga nauulit at marahil hindi lamang sa walang maituro, kundi dahil maaring yun ang leading ng Lord dun sa pastor na yun o dun sa leadership na yun, galing yun sa Diyos, dapat ulitin. At makikita mo pag pumunta ka sa iba pang mga simbahan, eh meron talaga yata mga topics na hindi pwede sa isang taon na hindi mo pa ulit-ulitin because they are so important. Bukod pa doon, eh meron din mga bagay na hindi lang inuulit, pero meron din mga bagay na maaring uh, kinaklarify lalo. Lalo na as a person, a believer, matures. Eh may mga bagay na maaring nung araw eh, ito lang yung naiintindihan natin. And then later as we grow older, eh mas marami na tayong naiintindihan. Kaya tuloy nagkakaroon din ng mga katanungan that probably deserves the answer. That probably deserves an answer specifically coming from the leadership of that church as that leadership looks to scripture or studies the Bible. Yan yung tinatawag na paglago at pagmature ng pagkakaintindi ng pananampalataya, paglago at pagkakaintindi ng pagkakaintindi ng Biblia, paglago at pagkakaintindi ng ginagawa ng Diyos sa personal natin buhay at sa buhay ng isang simbahan. So may clarification na pwedeng nangyayari. And perhaps also, and that is always our prayer, an improvement. Hindi lang sa kung ano yung sinasabi, kundi papano ito sinasabi. Hindi lang improvement kung ano yung tinuturo, kundi also improvement kung papano ito na tuturo. And it's also a product, of course, of the unique experience of not only of the people present, but also of the spiritual leader leading that group. Dahil for any ministry that God has started, God has allowed to grow He has allowed that to start, He has allowed that to grow because He has appointed someone to lead that ministry. And that person, as He walks in the Lord, as He journeys in faith, He's taking people with Him. He's journeying with other believers. He's partnering with other leaders that together by the grace of God, by the power of the Spirit of God, as that leader leads those people, as that leader leads that ministry, they get to experience very, very unique things. At yung mga bagay na yun ay kinapupulutan ng maraming mga aral resulting in them developing the kind of ministry that God has ordained for them to possess. And number four, or number five rather, na-determine natin yung content ng uh, the first five, yung mga lessons na nandiyan dyan, of course, as a result of our prayers for the Holy Spirit's guidance. As a result of our prayers for the Holy Spirit's guidance. I'm always praying for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Like what I said in Psalm 143, uh, that's always been my prayer. Teach me, Lord, to do your will. Let your Spirit guide me. And I know that there are other leaders in our church who prays with me, who prays for me. And I know that there are other people in our church, many of our members who've been with us from day one. Yung mga nakarating recently have always been praying for this church. They have owned the vision of this church. They have owned the mission of this church. They value this church as the church God has given them. So they are in constant prayer. Laging may nagpipray para sa akin, para sa atin, para sa church na ito. They will always be led by the Spirit of God. And that is important to me as a leader. That is important to me as I lead this church. And I pray that that will also be important to you. Sa inyong mga personal na buhay, sa inyong mga relationships, sa inyong mga marriages, sa inyong mga pamilya, sa inyong paglilingkod, that you are always led by the Spirit of God. That we always pray for the leading of the Spirit of God. Can, can we just remind one another with that? Let's pray for the leading of the Holy Spirit. Sige, i-remind natin ang bawat isa. Sabihin natin sa bawat isa yan. Let's always pray for the leading of the Holy Spirit. Now, Let's go to the heart of our message for the first part of uh, this message series for our conference. Ang pinaka gusto nating matutukan sa araw na ito at sa message na ito is this. Mga bagay na ipinapanalangin natin or what we are praying for as we study and do the first five. So, ito na yung first five na determine na natin kung ano siya. Repent and believe in the gospel. Worship together as a church family. Grow through discipleship training, 
Give to glorify God, fulfill God's mission. So pag-uusapan natin yan, hihimayin natin yan sa ating mga worship services, sa ating mga rise up groups or Bible studies. We're gonna ask people to disciple one another personally concerning this. Uh, and we're going to do certain things in relation to those topics. So, pag pinag-aralan po ba natin yan, pag ginawa natin yung mga nandiyan sa first five, what are we praying for that will happen to us as a believer, to us as a church? Again, we look to Scripture. Acts chapter 9, verse 31. Acts chapter 9, verse 31 says, So the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace and was being built up. And walking in the feet of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it multiplied. Again, Acts 9.31 says, So the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace and was being built up. And walking in the feet of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it multiplied. It is important for me to remind everybody here today and even those listening to us or watching us through social media na itong binasa natin right now is the ninth chapter of the book of Acts, which is basically, the book of Acts is the history of the start of the Christian church. Na pagkatapos mag-ascend ni Jesus to heaven, pagkatapos mag-ascend ni Jesus to heaven, yung kanyang mga disciples, they gathered together, they were empowered by the Holy Spirit, and receiving the power of the Holy Spirit in their lives began the New Testament church. After they were empowered by the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 1, going to Acts chapter 2, we see Peter, a different Peter, mula sa denying Jesus Christ three times, failing uh, Jesus, as was prophesied, to getting revived, getting restored. And now in Acts 1, all the way to Acts 2, being empowered by the Holy Spirit, we see a different Peter rising up, preaching a powerful sermon concerning the gospel of Jesus Christ. Na nakita natin doon sa pagbabasa natin ng Acts chapter 2, nung mga nakalipas ang mga messages natin concerning the first five, kumilos ang banal na spirito sa kanyang pangangaral na lahat ng mga karamihan, ng mga nakinig sa kanya, eh, tinamaan at nakakilala kay Jesus Christ, resulting in thousands of people becoming believers themselves. Nasa kanilang pakikinig ng salita ng Diyos, they responded by repenting, and then eventually, they got baptized. At mula sa Acts chapter, 41, uh, Acts chapter 2, verses 41 to uh, uh, 47, and we see the New Testament church devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching. We see the New Testament church uh, building each other up by having all things in common. We see signs, wonders, and miracles happening. We see them praising God. We see them eating together, whether in the temple or in their homes. And the result of that, sabi sa Acts chapter 2, is that they grew. The Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. But that's Acts chapter 2. Mula Acts chapter 3 all the way to Acts chapter 8, eh makikita natin na nagsisimula ng kumilos ang Diyos sa simbahan na ito. Nagsisimula na ang simbahan na ito na gawin na pinagagawa sa kanan Diyos. Eh nakaranasin sila ng mga unique challenges as they were starting as a church. Na habang sila eh nagpapatuloy sa ministry, ito na ang iba't ibang mga nangyayari. Mga pagsubok bilang isang simbahan, sa kanilang mga turo, sa kanilang relationships, that you would say probably they were like any other church of this time. Misa nakakabalita ka isang simbahan, may mga nag-aaway-aaway na mga leaders. Misa may mababalita ang mga simbahan, probably mga kilala mo na Christians either from the Philippines o dito sa Middle East, eh may mga nagtatalo-talo o hindi pagkakaunawaan sa teachings, sa administrative concerns sa loyalty sa leadership. May mga nakikita ka na ang mga pamumuhay ay hindi magaganda. May mga nakikita kang mga iba't ibang mga conflicts bunga ng iba't ibang mga daylan. Kaya tuloy, yung simbahan nag exist pero hindi mo nasasabi na nag-grow. At naranasan din yan ng New Testament Church. But praise the Lord. Kasi dito sa pagbabasa natin na Acts chapter 9, ay eh makikita natin na ang nangyari dito sa Acts chapter 9, after all of those experiences, eh nakaranas din naman sila ng season of peace. Nakaranas sila ng season of peace. At hindi lang siguro sa simbahan kahit sa namang lugar. Whether it is a family, whether it is a company, whether it is a country, whether it is a region, 
when people are experiencing a season or a time of peace, eh yun yung panahon na sila ay nag-grow. And when you're a student of history, not just Christian church history, but when you're a student of Philippine history, world history, kung natatandaan nyo pa yung mga lessons sa itinuro sa inyo nung high school at nung college concerning world history, tunulugan nyo man ang karamihan nun o hindi. Eh kahit paano siguro, eh meron pa rin kayo maririkol na mga gyera sa iba't ibang mga bansa, gyera sa iba't ibang panahon, just the last century, eh siguro natatandaan nyo na nagkaroon ng World War II at syempre kung nagkaroon ng World War II, may nauna doon na World War I at sa mga nakakalimot na ng world history, yung World War I nangyari yun sa ikalawang dekada nung unang, uh, nung unang ano, ikalawang dekada nung century na yun o yung tinatawag na 20th century. And then when people felt that anat ah, dala na mga tao sa isang malaking gera o yung World War I, after about 20 years, eh yun na naman ulit, kaya nga nagkaroon ng World War II at yun inabutan nung ilan sa atin marahil o yung ating mga magulang. And when people felt na hindi, nadala na mga tao sa World War II, kasi grabe nangyari, ang dami talaga namatay, kahit tayo mga Pilipino, uh, meron tayo mga alaala tungkol dyan, may collective uh, 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 idea tayo or consciousness concerning that, kasi may mga lolo't lolo kayo ng mga naging gerila o sundalo, uh, may mga kwento tungkol sa panahon ng Hapon, panahon ng Amerikano. So, you would say, nadala na mga tao doon sa matinding gera. But then it would take only a few years at nagkaroon na naman na isang malaking gera also in the Asian region at yun yung Korean War. And when you felt that the Korean War was already something to think about, eh, bumilang lang ng at least mga isa na namang dekada, nagkaroon naman ng Vietnam War, and then so on and so forth. Meron pa nga natawag na Cold War na hindi aktual na nagbabarilan, hindi aktual na, nag, na, na nagpapadal ng mga tanke, ng mga troops, pero for almost 50 years, the world was divided between democratic countries and communist countries in a war that has been called the Cold War. Nagigera sa ibang paraan, economics, nagigera sa ibang paraan, politics, nagigera sa ibang paraan. And, and those moments or those seasons have prevented the growth of economies, have prevented the growth of countries, and so on. And lumayo pa tayo sa Pilipinas mismo. Even in this present time, eh marami sa atin are old enough to remember that in the last 30 years, eh we've seen not only a change of presidents, but in the change of those presidents, eh kadalasan may mga nangyayari, mga revolusyon, whether they're called peaceful revolution. Eh sinelebrate dati ang bansa natin dahil nagkaroon ng EDSA 1, akalaan mo magkakaroon pa ng EDSA 2, akalaan mo magkakaroon ng EDSA 3. At dahil sa naging consensus ng mga tao sa ganyan, eh, baka mamaya magkaroon na naman ng eggs sa 4, eggs, eggs sa 5, at eggs sa 6. Sana iba naman, Menjola 1 naman, Menjola 2, Menjola 3. Sana next time naman, eh, ano, Coastal Road 1, Coastal Road 2, Coastal Road 3. Yung dapat dire-diretso yung growth ng Pilipinas, pero pag may gulo, pag may revolusyon, eh, nahihinder yung growth of the economy, nahihinder yung growth ng country. And going back to our topic for today, even churches are the same. Naihinder yung growth ng believer pag may gulo sa kanyang personal spiritual life. Naihinder yung growth ng believer pag may gulo dun sa particular church kung saan siya kasali. And we're praying na ang church natin, we're praying na maraming churches throughout the world will experience itong naranasan sa Acts chapter 9, verse 31, a time of peace. A time of peace. Na kung saan dahil merong a time of peace, ano daw ang nangyari? Sabi sa Acts 9.31, and again I read, So the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace and was being built up. So yung kapayapaan na yun, naniniwala tayo, ay biyaya, blessing ng Diyos. Amen. Naniniwala tayo na yung season of peace ay biyaya at blessing ng Diyos. At pag binibigay ng Panginoon yung season of peace in your life as an individual, a season of peace in our life as a church, napakagandang panahon yun para yung spiritual life natin at pati yung simbahan, ma-build up, ma-build up ng ano? Ng tamang foundation. Ma-build up ng tamang foundation, maturuan ng mga tamang turo. That as a result, ano sabi dyan? 
and walking in the fear of the Lord. Kasi yun ang nangyayari pag ang believer ay natuturuan ng tama, nagkakaroon sa kanya ng fear of the Lord. Nagkakaroon sa kanya ng banal na takot sa Diyos. That as a result of this fear of the Lord, as a result of the comfort of the Holy Spirit, hindi mo na kailangang planuhin para bang automatic na nagmumultiply or nag-grow ang isang simbahan. Nagmumultiply o nag-grow ang isang simbahan. And in the light of that, and based on Acts chapter 9.31, eh, merong limang bagay na pinagpipray natin na mangyari sa ating church as we study and do the first five, beginning with this. Number one, we want our church to become more biblical. We want our church to become more biblical. Number two, we want our church to become truly united. Number two, we would like our church to become truly united. Number three, we want our church to become spiritually healthy. Number three, we want our church to become spiritually healthy. Number four, we want our church to become fully committed. Number four, we want our church to become fully committed. And number five, we want our church to become a growing church. Number five, we want our church to become a growing church. That as we do these studies, yang the first five, pinagpipray natin again, and can you repeat aloud after me? More biblical. Truly united. Spiritually healthy. Fully committed. Growing church. Palakpakan natin ang Panginoon. Palakpakan po natin ang Panginoon. That is what we are praying for. That is our desire. At dahil yan yung ating pinagpipray at ihimayin natin ng mas uh, lalo yan sa ating mga messages for today, yan yung ating dinidesire. What should be our attitude as we study and do these things? Ayan na yung first five, ayan na yung lessons, ayan na yung mga gagawin. What should be our attitude as we study and do these things? Dahil napaka-importante yung attitude ng tao. Kung ano yung kanyang pag-aaralan, kung ano kanyang gagawin, kung ano yung kanyang kinakaharap. Sabi nga eh, uh, kung ano yung attitude natin greatly affects yung patutunguhan natin. Kung ano yung attitude natin greatly affects kung ano yung patutunguhan natin. And again, I return to scripture to the book of Acts once more, chapter 17, verses 10 to 12, kung saan ang sabi, The brothers immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. And when they arrived, they went to the Jewish synagogue, into the Jewish synagogue. Now these Jews were more noble than those in Thessalonica. They received the word with all eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. Many of them therefore believed with not a few Greek women of eye standing as well as men. Mula sa experience ng New Testament Church with Peter being empowered by the Spirit together with other disciples, with Peter rising up to give that sermon, launching the New Testament Church, e tayo nag-fast forward sa isa pang servant ng God na kilala nating lahat, hinahangaan nating lahat, binabasa nating lahat, at yan ay si Apostle Paul. At makikita natin dito sa bahagi ng kanyang kwento sa Acts chapter 17, e meron siyang mga natagpuan ng mga mana ng palataya in Berea, And these Jews in Berea were said to be more noble than the Thessalonians or those in Thessalonica because they received the word. Sabi sa verse 11, they received the word with all eagerness, examining the scriptures daily. Napakasarap na makatagpo ng ganyang mana ng palataya. Kung paano natagpuan ni Paul yung mga mana ng palataya doon sa Berea na sila ay mga eager sa salita ng Diyos and they examined the scriptures, I could just imagine Paul as a preacher, I could just imagine Paul as a spiritual leader, siguro tuwang-tuwa siya. Sino man dito ang naranasan ng mag-preach, sino man dito ang naranasan magturo, whether sa worship service, o sa Bible studies natin, o sa mga seminars, kahit ano man yung itinuturo mo, ginaganahan ka magturo. Na mo motivate kang mag-aral. 
na, na fulfill ka pag yung kaharap mo ay eh katulad mo rin na gustong mag-aral. Pag nararamdaman mo na yung mga kaharap mo ay eh ganadong uh, mag-aral kasama mo ng salita ng Diyos. Ganon din naman siguro na nakakayamot, nakakainis, nakakalungkot, na pagkatapos mo mag-aral, pagkatapos mo mag-prepare, eh walang kagana-gana yung mga kaharap mo sa pinag-aaralan. Now, even in our church, my prayer is not only that I will become more effective in preaching and teaching, my prayer is that all of our preachers, all of our teachers, together with me, eh mas lalo pa mag-improve through the years. Na bukod sa kung ano itinuturo ay tama, eh gusto ko rin maturuan ang mga nagpipreach at nagtuturo sa atin na pag sila'y nagtuturo, na dahil nga tama yung kanilang tinuturo, eh tinatamaan naman yung tinuturoan nila. At kung sila'y tinatamaan ng tamang turo, eh ito'y kanilang napakikinggan ng wasto. Eh napakahirap naman na kahit gano'ng kaganda itinuturo mo at kahit pinagpipray mo sa balal na ispirito na tamaan yung mga tao ng mga magandang turo, eh kung tulog naman sila habang nagtuturo ka. At nakaranas na tayo ng ganyan. Nung nakita mo yung outline ng preacher, nung nakita mo yung outline ng Bible study leader, ang ganda naman nung pinasa mo. Kaya kaganda nung nakasulat. Pero nung itinuro na niya, nung diniliber na niya, eh kinatulugan siya ng mga tao. At minsan pa nga, sinasabi ng ilang mga preacher at ilang mga teacher, eh kasi nga, dahil siguro sinasapian ng masasamang espiritu yung mga nakikinig sa kanya, kaya tinutulugan siya. So yung blame, binibigay niya dun sa mga tao. Kaya tingnan nyo nga, kung just in case tama yung ganong theory ng ilang mga preacher, tingnan nyo nga lang kung sinasapian ng masamang espiritu ang inyong mga katabi, yan kaya eh natutulog o hindi nakikinig. And sometimes, that's how some preachers view it. Sometimes, yan ang a theory na ilang mga teacher na kung tinutulugan siya ng mga tinuturuan niya o pinapangaralan niya, kasalanan nila. At marahil kasalanan pa ng jablo kaya hindi nila nagigets yung kanyang turo. But any preacher and any teacher must also be humble enough to admit, pag alimbawa, teka, hindi siguro dapat sisihin yung tao, hindi siguro dapat sisihin, kahit pa nga ang jablo, minsan lahat na lang siya na nasisisi kahit hindi na nakasalaknan. Baka ang may problema yung pagtuturo mo, na kahit nga tama yung ituturo mo, pero paano mo ito dinideliver o paano mo tinuturo ito more effectively to people. But, but here we see in Acts chapter 17, verse 10 to 12, na whether or not yung preacher o yung teacher mahusay sa kanyang delivery, siguro kung pipiliin mo between the two, no, yung mahusay mag-deliver at tama yung turo, mas pipiliin mo na yung tama ang turo. Tama yung turo, pero yung, di ba, nagsastruggle ka kasi nakakaantok siya dahil boring siya, may solution dun eh. Matulog ka, para pagdating mo sa kanya, yung gising na gising ang katawan mo, magkapi ka habang nagtuturo siya, uh, kumain ka ng krope. Kami nung araw, ganyan eh. Nung kabataan kami, meron kaming ganito mga conference pag holiday at kadalasan ginagawa sa mga malalamig na lugar tulad ng Baguio, Tagaytay. At kadalasan yung conference ginagawa ng mga umaga. So kung kami bumiyahin ng malayo, puyat ka, Kinabukasan, o, oh, darating kami ng zoom, mga 11 ng gabi, 12 midnight, naguhuntaan pa ako ng kwento, at napapaalalahan na kami ng mga pastor namin, o, oh, ang gising natin, alas 5 ha, ng madaling araw. So, puyat ka, pagod, and then sasabihin sa inong, ano, ang session bukas 5, eh, eh, di 5. And then 6 o'clock, tapos yung preacher, eh, ganun nga, tama yung turo, kaso, nakakaantok. Kaya natuto na kami nung araw, meron kaming kropek na dala, meron kaming sampalok na dala, at pag hindi pa yun effective, yung kropek, yung sampalok, yung kape, pwedeng kumuha ng blade, laslasin mo sarili mo, pigaan mo ng kalamansi. May paraan kung paano ka magising sa isang nakakaantok na preacher o teacher. So again, kung we're gonna choose between the two, eh mas gusto mo na yung tama ang itinuturo, pero nakakaantok. Kesa naman yung ang galing nga magturo, Pero linilihis naman pala tayo ng landas. Tama nga yung pagtuturo, uh, ta- ta- ma- mahusay mang magturo, pero itinuturo niya sa atin, magdadala sa atin sa impyerno. Diba? So, saan mo mas gusto? E di sana, pareho na. Tama yung turo, at saka mahusay din sa kanyang pangangaral. But again, going back, if just in case in your life, makaka-encounter kayo ng pagkakataon na tama yung turo, pero nakakaantok magturo, eh gayahin natin itong mga taga-Bereans. 
gayahin natin itong mga mananampalatayang ito. Parang hindi na issue sa kanila kung magaling o hindi magaling yung, yung ano, paraan ng pagtuturo. Kasi ano sabi dito? They were eager. And they examined the scriptures daily. Kaya we place a special emphasis here. Isipin nyo ito ha? Na ito dapat ang attitude natin if we desire to grow as a believer and we desire to grow as a church. Study with all eagerness. Gayahin natin yung mga taga-Berea, gayahin natin yung mga mananampalataya na yan, let us study with all eagerness. Ano yung word na study? Pwede nung bata tayo, linalabanan natin yan, baari ang memories natin, ng pag-aaral natin no elementary, nung no high school, nung no college, hindi maganda. Tapos ngayon, naging Christian ka, study pa rin, mag-aaral pa rin. Kaya may mga tao ang iniisip ni Diyan, pagod na ako dyan tapos na ako dyan. But then you will realize this, it is important for the believer to study. And it is important for the believer to desire to know more about God. To learn more about this faith. At yung nagiging eager sa pag-aaral gets to read the Bible for themselves. Yan ang isa sa mga magagandang nangyayari, isa sa mga tamang attitude when it comes to studying is that we read the Bible for ourselves. So ipinapangaral binabanggit yung mga verses, and then tayo mismo, binabasa natin, baka nga binabalik-balikan natin. You know, I have many humbling experiences concerning this, even in the last four years of our church, in the last five years of our church. Na ako'y natutuwa pag may mga kapatiran na biglang i-message ako privately and tell me, Pastor, uh, baka nagkaroon lang ng typographical error. Kasi dapat, for example, ang, ang, ang message is Acts chapter 22, verse 16. Yung verse, sa pagmamadali ko naging Acts chapter 2, yun din yung na, nabasa ko. Yun din yung na gawa ng PowerPoint. Huli na nung na-check. Pero na-appreciate ko yung kapatiran kasi ibig sabihin, nakikinig siya. Ibig sabihin, binabalikan niya. Ganun yung mga Bereans, nakinig kay Paul, they were eager. And then, binalikan nila, in-examine nila yung scriptures daily to see if what Paul said was true. Minsan nga, hindi lang pa ako nagtatypo error. Minsan, book error pa. Nangyari pa minsan yan. And again, I was humbled that somebody would correct me and tell me, Pastor, baka ang, ang iniisip mo hindi Proverbs, Psalms. Baka hindi Psalms, Proverbs. And yes, he was right. Dahil minsan, pag alimbawa, sa isang ligo, I would have to preach three times, I would have to preach five times. E minsan, may mga nakakalusot talagang mga ganung mga bagay. And I have been challenged by that, motivated by that, humbled by that, but encouraged by that. Kasi ibig sabihin yung mga kapatiran, o may mga kapatiran na talagang eager to learn, to study, and to examine the scripture with me. Kaya isa pa sa magandang nadidevelop sa mga kapatiran is that they take down notes. Yung taking down notes ay isang bagay na gusto kong maging kultura ng ating church dito sa Mansura at sa iba't ibang panig ng mundo. And this is a challenge for today's generation. Dahil ang bagong henerasyon, unti-unti na silang tinitrain to become a paperless society. Na darating ang araw ang mga printed books that will be extinct. Darating ang araw yung mga notebooks or coupon bonds or paper as we know them will be extinct. Yan ang gustong patungahan ng henerasyon na ito. But for people who are as old as me, or at least mas bata ng konti sa akin, o mas matanda ng konti sa akin, eh yan ang kinalakihan natin eh, yung nagno-notebook, nag-print. Um, there was a time when I was a, uh, a very young preacher way back in the late 90s and early 2000s. May na-attendan akong isang malaking kongregasyon sa Pilipinas. I was only there as a visitor observing the church, observing and learning from the pastor who was preaching. And I can still recall, I think it was in the late 90s going to the early 2000s, na yung preacher, wala siyang dalang paper na outline like what I'm used to do. Nakita ko siya, ang dala niya instead was a laptop. Na at that time, in the last uh, part of the 90s, going to the early part of the 2000s, ano na yun? Uh, modern na yun. Ibig sabihin eh, cutting edge yung kanyang style ng pangangaral. At hindi basta pulpit, it was like, it, it was, it was like a, 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 a table in, in a bar. Parang ganun ang, ang setup, nakapatong yung laptop doon. At nung nakita ko, sabi ko, galing. Galing. Tapos meron pa siyang pointer. 
may hawak siyang pointer. Uh, I, hindi ko na matandaan masyado kung yung pointer was about uh, pointing or a laser pointer for the screen. Uh, it was in a cinema. Or was it because siya mismo yung nag-ooperate nung kanyang uh, laptop na kahit malayo siya, naglalakad siya habang nagpipreach, eh, uh, lumalabas yung mga PowerPoint slides niya. At dahil ako'y na-impreso sa ginawa niya, nag-attempt ako gawin yun. At least siguro ng mga isang taon. Hanggang sa na-realize ko, hindi bagay sa akin. Na kahit gawin ko siya ng gawin, nahihirapan ako. Nahihirapan ako makapag-preach ng natural, nahihirapan ako makapagturo ng natural. May mga bagay na gusto kong sabihin, nakakalimutan ko dahil nalilito ko kung ano ba pipindutin ko sa pipindutin ko. Uh, ako na yung nagpipreach, ako pa yung mag-ooperate, sabi ko, para siguro sa kanya yun, effective sa kanya, kaya kanya na lang. Hangga sa unti-unti ko na rin natanggap na, eh siguro talaga mas okay pa rin ako sa old school o kung saan yung aking kinasanayan. Which was what? Growing up, sinanay ako ng aking mga pastors, ng aking mga Bible study teachers na may notebook at nagtitake down ng notes. May notebook at nagtitake down ng notes. At sinanay din ako ng mga nag-train sa akin na pastor na meron akong piniprint na outline which I probably have right now. So meron akong outline, meron akong Bible. Yun yung kinasanayan ko. Nakasanayan ko mag-preach for instance na tatlo hanggang apat na limang pages siguro yan. At haba nagpipreach ako, nasasanay, nasanay ako na i-turn yung page, i-turn yung page, and by doing that, kung saan ako nasanay, eh, nagpatuloy-tuloy ako sa pagiging effective as a preacher, as a teacher. What am I saying here? Whether your style is what is now known as a more modern style, gumagamit ka ng technology, hindi na nga laptop ngayon, mga cellphones na nga lang, baka pagdating ng araw, eh, may pinipindot ka nalang sa utak mo, o meron ka nalang binubuga, huw, biglang yun na yung lalabas, and you don't know where this technology thing will go. Eh kung yun na nakasanayan mo, at sa inerasyon nyo, eh yun yung nakakatulong, eh yun ang gawin mo para talagang ma maging effective ka sa pag-aaral, maging effective ka sa pag pagmi-minister o sa pag-deliver. Pero if you're gonna be humble enough and be humble like me and admit, teka, meron kaming nakasanayan at yung nakasanayan namin nakatulong sa amin, eh magstay ka doon para ikaw maging effective at yung tinuturuan mo maging blessing ka rin sa kanila. And that is how I'm justifying the fact today. That I would like our people na dahil ang inyong pastor ay old school, eh maging old school din, na kung meron kayong pagkakataon, kumuha kayo ng mga notebooks, kumuha kayo ng mga ballpen, pag meron tayong worship services, kung meron tayong mga Bible studies, ugaliin ninyo yung nagtitake down notes. Amen! Amen! At kung just in case, like what I said, kung alimbawa, masasanay ka na hindi nagsusulat, pero dahil sa makabago generation ka lumaki, eh, di gamitin mo smartphones mo, pag meron mga slides, meron mga points, pinipicturean mo siya. Pero sana gawin mo rin yung ginagawa namin na old school. Na pagkatapos mag-print out, we write things down. Pagkatapos may notebook, we write things down. And then we go home, we review it. Ganon din sana ginawa mo. Pag ginagamit mo cellphone mo, pinipicturean mo yung mga notes. You go home, you review what you just uh, taken a picture of. Kahit pa sa Facebook account mo, pinos siya. Because the issue here is not the method. The issue here is our attitude that we want to truly learn. Amen. The issue is not the method. The issue is the attitude that we would like to truly learn. Kaya, pakisabi ninyo sa inyo mga katabi, sana sa susunod may notebook na tayo kapatid at may ballpen pa, ha? Yan, pakisabi natin sa ating mga katabi yan, sana next week, eh, may notebook na tayo, may ballpen pa, nang hindi natin inuubos yung ballpen sa church dahil kuha tayo ng kuha ng ballpen sa church. Amen! May ba? May notebook at may ballpen pa. At ito pa. Yung ibig sabihin ng eager. Ibig sabihin ng eager, eh, he gets someone to mentor him or her concerning such studies. He gets someone to mentor them or to mentor him or her concerning their studies. In church, isa yan sa blessing na makatagpo ka ng ate, kuya, tito, tita na maaring pwedeng tulungan ka sa iyong pag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos. We'll talk more about that in another message. And of course, when we say eager to learn, is that we're learning to share also what we are learning with others. Dahil isa sa rason kung bakit may mga lumalago sa kanyang pananampalataya kasi hindi lang siya nag-take in, hindi lang siya nag-reflect sa kanyang natutunan, 
pero nagkakaroon siya ng pagkakataon na ipasa naman yun sa iba. Pag nahihinto ka doon, doon sa part na yun, you're just always taking in and then you're not passing it to someone else. Ang dami pwedeng hindi magandang mangyari. Unang-una na doon yung hindi paglago. Kasama sa paglago na pag may nakuha, pinapasa. Pero that's not the worst part. The worst part is, pag mayroong mga mananampalataya that they're just taking in and they're not just passing on, they have a tendency to become critical people. Na halimbawa, imbis na mapansin nila yung tama doon sa tinuro, ang nakikita nila yung mali doon sa tinuro. Na imbis na, na, na kukuha nila kung yung maganda doon sa itinuturo, hinahanapan nila ng butas yung itinuturo. Na pag halimbawa, hindi mo na ipapasa itinuturo mo, hindi ka busy sa pagmementor sa iba, sa pagdidisciple sa iba, busy ka na mapansin lahat ng pangit sa loob ng isang simbahan. Nakikita mo yung toilet na hindi malinis, kahit ikaw naman ang dumumi nun. Nakikita mo yung mga gamit kung saan-saan at nasisisi yung mga leaders, bakit hindi sila ganun kahusay sa pag-aayos, pero ikaw, ang parte mo lang talaga ay eh, mag-criticize. That is what happens to people when they just take in, they're doing nothing. But listen to this, when you're taking in a teaching, when you're learning, you're growing because you're seeing someone else grow through your life. Nasa sobrang busy mo sa pagme-mentor kay brother A, brother B, brother C, sister A, sister B, sister C, ni halos hindi mo mapansin yung mga kakulangan na isang simbahan kasi you're overwhelmed with people who are being changed by God. Pag nakikita mo yung pagbabago sa buhay na isang tao, you get to go on your knees and you get to cry and be, be, be in awe and wonder of God's amazing love and power to change people's lives. Kaya yan ang ipag-pray nating mangyari sa atin na tayo may matutunan and then gamitin tayo ng Panginoon para magturo din sa iba. Which leads us to our last point for this particular message, part one of this three-part message series. Ang pinatutunguhan talaga nito, ang tamang attitude dapat lagi na isang mana ng palataya is to stay positive. Ang pinatutunguhan ng lahat ng ito is ang mana ng palataya, lalo na ngayon kung merong bagong pag-aaralan, meron tayong gustong pag-aaralan, bilang isang simbahan, meron tayong gustong gawin, eh natutunan natin to really stay positive. Lalong-lalo na, dahil lang inyong pastor or spiritual leader of this church, yan ang lagi kong pinagpipray sa sarili ko that I will be a person who will encourage others to be positive thinkers to encourage others to stay positive. Sa mundong ito na napakaraming negative thinker, na napakaraming negative na nangyayari, kahit minsan anong maganda na gusto mong i-push, hindi nagaganap kasi yung mga negative thinker o yung mga negative ang spirit, sila yung ginagamit ng jablo upang maging hadlang for what wonderful or beautiful things that could happen in one's personal life and even the life of a ministry or a church. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 16-19 reminds us of this where it says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the Spirit. Again, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 16-19, at ito ang last uh, set of verses for this message. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the Spirit. Listen to this. The devil will always try to distract us. Meron tayong kaaway, merong spiritual warfare. Kailangan tayo mapaalalahanan niyan. Lalo na minsan kung nako-confuse tayo kung sino talaga ang ating tunay na kaaway. The devil is an expert in making us each other's enemies. The devil is an expert in distracting us using the physical, using the material, using the temporal, using the things of this world to make us once again earthly and sinful in nature. Yun yung tinatakasan natin. Eh. Yun yung sinasanctify sa atin ng Panginoon na mula sa pagiging sinful in nature when we got saved, we got justified, and now as a believer of God, we're getting sanctified by His Holy Spirit, by the gospel of Jesus Christ, by being part of a church, we're being perfected towards our eventual glorification. Justified, sanctified, glorified. That is what we are truly praying for. And the devil is working hard and double time to bring us back 
to what is earthly, to bring us back to what is material, what is temporal, what is physical, what is sinful. And here we're reminded, there's such a thing as spiritual warfare. The devil will try to distract us. Pwedeng may mangyayari sa personal life mo, sa trabaho mo, sa finances mo, sa health mo. Pwedeng may mangyayari sa marriage mo, sa husband mo, sa wife mo, sa children mo, sa family mo. Pwedeng may mangyayari sa trabaho mo. Pwedeng may mangyayari sa, sa tinitiran mo. Pwedeng may mangyayari na hindi mo inaasahan na nangyayari. And you have to look at what is happening in your life with eyes of faith. You have to pray again, yung sa Psalm 143, kung saan sabi, teach me Lord to do your will. You are my God. Lead me Holy Spirit. That you may see, teka, distraction ito. Distraction ito. Galing ito sa demonyo. Galing ito sa away. Now the devil can manipulate our circumstances at sobra kami sa ma-overwhelm when people discourage you. Because yes, people can discourage us. That's, that's something that we should accept. That's something that we must recognize. People have, can and will discourage us. Pwede meron na kong kausap ngayon dito sa kongregasyon na to, o di kaya pwede yung nanonood sa atin through social media. You know what I'm talking about. You're probably in, 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 in a situation right now wherein you're you're really discouraged. May nang di-discourage sa'yo. May naka-discourage sa'yo. And you're still affected by that discouragement. And then later on, again, sasakyan ng jablo yan, we can be affected. We can be influenced by negative thinkers. We can be affected. We can be influenced by negative thinkers. Sometimes, it's a battle, a daily battle for us to, to stay positive. Lalong-lalo na, Kung halimbawa, ikaw yung tipo na pagising sa umaga before you pray, before you read your Bible, before you worship God, before you even pee, before you eat or drink. Eh, ang una mong ginagawa, eh, tingnan ko ano ang update sa social media. Do you know na may mga taong ganun talaga, pag dilat ng mata, hablot ang phone, titingnan ang update, tinitingnan niya kung may nag-message sa kanya. Wala namang nag-message. Pero tinitingnan niya yung iba't ibang mga na-post ng kung sino-sino mga tao and then sometimes, for some people, and others many times, meron ka palang mga connection na lagi nagpo-post ng mga negative things. Inumpisahan mo ang araw mo with negative post. Yung iba, nadala na sa ganyan, kaya ang ginagawa nila, ina-unfollow nila yung mga tao na napansin nila, parang puro kanigahan na lang ang pinopost. Yung iba went as far as blocking them. At meron din akong iba na hindi na nila lang in-unfollow, in-unblock. Sila na mismo, tinanggal na lang nila yung Facebook account nila altogether na hindi sila madistract ng ganitong klaseng mga bagay. But then that is a fact. That is a reality. We can be influenced by negative thinkers. We can be affected by unpleasant circumstances. We can be affected by unpleasant circumstances. Hindi lahat mature, hindi lahat matibay, hindi lahat patient, understanding, persevering, at nagre-reflect iyon sa ating pag-iisip, pagsasalita, ginagawa, at nakikita, affected ka. Naa-apektuhan ka ng mga unpleasant circumstances. You're letting it affect you. Pero ano ang susi in staying positive? Ano yung susi na as we study and do the first five, we stay positive? Always remember that you must be focused on the will of God in Christ Jesus. Yun yung sinabi sa atin sa 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 19. Always remember to be focused on the will of God in Christ Jesus. Ano yung short version yan? Look to Jesus. Ano yung most popular version yan? Look to Jesus. Can everybody say that together aloud with me, please? Look to Jesus. Can everybody say that one more time aloud? Look to Jesus. Nang hindi na quench yung magandang nangyayari sa buhay mo, hindi na quench yung spirit. Again, I read 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 19. At pag nag-aagree kayo dun sa mga sinasabi niya, mag-amen kayo ha? At kung gusto niyong mangyari lahat ng yan sa buhay niyo, mag-amen kayo bawat isa. Amen? Okay, ano sabi sa 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 19? Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. 
Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. For you do not quench the spirit. Amen. When a person stays positive, when a person looks to Jesus, kahit ano ang sasabihin sa kanyang negative, nangyayaring hindi magandang bagay sa kanyang buhay, nakatutok siya. Hindi siya nagpapadistract. He is focused on the will of Jesus, on the will of God through Jesus. He looks to Jesus. Knowing all of these things, make this your prayer for today. Knowing all of these things, make this your prayer for today. For today's conference, as we make some studies, make this your prayer for today, as we desire to grow more in our faith. Can you declare these words aloud with me, please? I will focus on Jesus and help my church grow. I will focus on Jesus and help my church grow. And one more time, together aloud, please, as one united church family, let's proclaim, believe, and declare, I will focus on Jesus and help my church grow. Let us pray. Aming Diyos at aming Ama, nagpapasalamat po kami sa araw na ito na sa unang bahagi ng aming three-part message series concerning what we desire for our church. E pinapaalalahanan niyo po sa amin ay isang napakahalagang bagay and that is to focus on Jesus to focus on Jesus. At alam namin, Panginoon, na itong pag-aaral na amin tatahakin with the first five, yung mga gagawin namin as we study the first five, we know, oh God, this is pointing us so strongly back to you. And we want to honor you, Lord. We want to worship you. We want to learn through you by the power of your Holy Spirit. And help us today, oh God, to be able to truly experience Spiritual revival, spiritual restoration. Ma-recharge kami, Panginoon. Mapatibay ang pundasyon ng aming pananampalataya that through our personal growth, we can contribute to the growth of our church family. Mga kapatid sa Panginoon, saan man kayo nakaupo habang lahat ay nakapikit? Can we just lift both of our hands to the Lord as we continue to pray? Can you just lift both of your hands to the Lord as we continue to pray? Father God in heaven, Salamat sa mga kapatiran namin na kasama ko ngayon habang ako'y nangangaral live dito sa Mansura at maging sa mga kapatiran namin throughout the world, listening to this, watching this through social media. Ang desire po namin, Panginoon, is to focus on Jesus. Ang desire po namin, Panginoon, hindi kami madistract ng gawa ng kaaway, ng mga negative thinkers, ng mga bagay na nagaganap na hindi maganda sa buhay ng iba at maging sa aming buhay. We don't want to be distracted by all of this, by earthly things. We want to set our minds on Christ, on what is heavenly, on what is pure, on what is good, what is beautiful. We want to focus on you, Jesus. And even as we lift to you our hearts, make them pure. Even as we lift to you our minds, renew them and give us the mind of Christ. Even as we lift to you our mortal physical bodies, heal them, O Lord. Revive us once again and allow us, O oh God, na ang spiritual life po namin, Panginoon, ay tunay na lumago sa pag-aaral ng iyong mga salita, sa biyaya ng Diyos, sa kapangyarihan ng iyong banal na Espiritu. At sa inyo po namin, sinusurrender ang lahat ng aming mga iniisip. Naku, yung mga iniisip na yan, minsan yan ang nagiging distraction, minsan yan ang nagiging hindrance, yan ang nagiging dahilan. Patawarin niyo kami, Panginoon, if in the past, we said yes to these distractions. If in the past, pinatulan namin yung mga distractions na yan, we, we even submit to you our attitudes. Lahat ng mga mali sa pag-iisip namin, sa attitude namin concerning life, concerning faith, concerning serving God, concerning ministry, concerning leaders of the church, concerning the church, lahat ng mali sa aming attitude, i-correct mo kami in Jesus' name. At ayaw namin maging katulad ng mga nakikita namin na nagiging negative thinker. Ayaw namin maging katulad ng mga nagpapaapekto sa unpleasant situations. Ayaw namin, Panginoon, na madistract sa magandang ginagawa mo sa aming buhay at sa simbahan. Lord, by your grace, we lift ourselves to you. We lift our hands to you. We ask you to empower us. We ask you to protect us. We ask you, Lord, teach us. Help us, Lord, to focus on Jesus. Help us to help our church grow. 
na maging sa pagpapatuloy namin sa pag-aaral sa second part and third part of this lesson, allow us, O oh Lord, to soak in your word, soak in your presence, magbabad sa inyong salita, magbabad sa inyong presensya, mag-glorify ka sa aming buhay. We pray all of this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. Palakpakan po natin muli ang Panginoon. Minsan pa, let's give the Lord the best.